Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be improving the quality of our shadows and giving them some nice soft edges. Before I start I just wanted to mention that last week I started a new tutorial series about adding sound effects and music to your game and that tutorial series is going to be going out every other week so it will alternate with this OpenGL series. So if you want to learn about 3D audio for your game you can check out that series but if not these OpenGL tutorials are still going to be coming out every two weeks. So last week we added shadows into our world but the edges of these shadows obviously don't look very good right now. All we're doing at the moment is checking whether each terrain pixel should be in a shadow or out of a shadow and if it's in a shadow we darken it and if it isn't we don't. This gives our shadows extremely hard edges and that really highlights the individual pixels of the shadow map along the edges of the shadows. To improve this we're going to be adding a bit more of a gradient at the edges of the shadows so that the edges fade slowly from dark to light which will hopefully make the individual pixels of the shadow map a little bit less obvious. To do this we're going to be using a technique called percentage closer filtering or PCF for short. So now when we're rendering a given fragment on the terrain, instead of just sampling the shadow map once to find out whether the fragment is in or out of the shadow, we're going to sample the shadow map multiple times to sample a whole area around the fragment to find out how much inside or outside of the shadow this fragment is. The amount that we darken the terrain fragment by will then depend on how much of the surrounding area is inside the shadow, meaning that the terrain fragments are no longer just in the shade or not in the shade, they can now be a range of different shade levels depending on how near to the edge of the shadow they are. So for example let's say that we're going to sample a 3x3 area around each terrain fragment to find out how dark it should be. For fragments in the centre of the shadow all of the samples will be inside the shadow and so these fragments will still be fully darkened by the shadow. For fragments that are nowhere near any shadows all of the samples would be outside the shadow and so these pixels wouldn't be darkened at all. But for fragments like this one here, about 56% of the samples are inside the shadow and the rest are outside, so this fragment will be partially darkened to 56% of the shadow darkness. Let's do another example with this fragment here, so 89% of the samples are in the shadow, so the fragment is darkened to 89% of the shadow darkness. If we do this for all of the terrain fragments then you can see that the edge of the shadow starts to look slightly improved and has a bit more of a gradient to it. We could improve this even more by using larger areas to sample from, so in that example we were using 3x3 but we can increase that to whatever size we want. Just be aware though that the larger the area is the more samples have to be taken and sampling a texture many times each fragment can be a bit expensive so again you'll have to find a balance between quality and performance. So let's now jump into the code and try and implement this. So we're going to start off in the terrain fragment shader where the sampling of the shadow map is taking place and the first thing that we need to do is to define the size of the area that we're going to be sampling around each fragment. The way that I'm going to define this is by how many pixels either side of the center pixel we should sample. So a PCF count of zero here would mean that there's no PCF and we'd just be sampling once like last week. A PCF count of one would mean that we'd sample one pixel either side of the center pixel which would be a 3x3 area. A PCF count of two would be a 5x5 area and so on. For now I'm just going to set this to two and then I'm going to calculate the number of texture pixels or texels that are going to be sampled in this area which is a pretty simple calculation so it's just going to be PCF count multiplied by 2 plus 1 and then all of that squared. The next thing we need to know is the size of the shadow map and I really recommend that you load this up as a uniform variable so that if you ever change it uh, in the Java code it will change automatically in the shaders as well but again I'm going to be lazy here and just define it in the shader code and at the moment I'm using a shadow map of size 4096 by 4096. From this we can then calculate the size of each pixel in the shadow map and seeing as the full width of the texture is 1, the width of a pixel must be 1 divided by the width of the texture in pixels. And we're also going to need a float here and this is going to keep track of how many of the samples are inside the shadow. So we now want to sample all of the texels in the surrounding area and we're going to do this in a couple of for loops. So we're going to need an outer and an inner for loop and the outer for loop is going to loop through all of the X offsets from the center pixel 
and the inner for loop will loop through all of the Y offsets from the center pixel. We're then going to sample the shadow map just like we did last time and this will find the distance of the nearest object to the light at that point. But now we're going to add an offset to the texture coordinates so that it samples a different pixel in the surrounding area every time, every iteration. And this offset needs to be in terms of texture pixels. So we're going to multiply it by the texel size. So that will now sample an area of pixels on the shadow map. And each time we take a sample, we need to test whether that sample is in the shadow or not, just like we did before. But this time, if it is in the shadow, then we need to increase the total value by one. So after these four loops, the total variable holds the number of samples that were in the shadow. We're now just going to divide that number by the total number of samples, which will give us a number between zero and one, indicating how much of the surrounding area is in the shadow. And from that, we can then calculate the light factor. And this is going to be equal to one, minus the total multiplied by shadow chord W, um, and that's for fading out the distant shadows, which is what we did last time. Then we just need to multiply the light factor by the terrain's lighting, which we did do last time, but I think it actually makes more sense to multiply this just with the diffuse lighting, because the shadows shouldn't really be seen in areas that are already in the shade. Um, so if we go ahead and run that, we should now be able to see some improvements to the edges of the shadows. It's still not perfect, but it's definitely an improvement on what we had before. And by playing around with the PCF count and the resolution of the shadow map, you should be able to get some pretty nice results. The final thing about shadows that I wanted to talk about is self-shadowing. So at the moment, the entities can only cast shadows onto the terrain and not onto themselves or other entities. So to fix that, you just need to do the first part of the last tutorial but in the entity related classes rather than the terrain classes. So you'd be implementing it into the vertex shader, the fragment shader, the static shader class and the entity renderer class. Once you've done that, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a problem with the entities and they look a bit like this. Um, and this problem is known as shadow acne. This happens because when checking whether there's something closer to the light in the shadow map, it will find itself. Uh, which should have the exact same distance from the light, but because of the shadow map's accuracy being limited by the resolution, it's sometimes slightly in front and sometimes slightly behind, which creates this effect on the entity. To fix this is pretty easy, we can just add a slight bias to the test uh, to make sure that the entity is a little way behind an object before it starts receiving its shadow, and when you run that you'll see that the shadow acne has pretty much gone. So that is going to be it for this week and for Shadows as well. Uh, I would actually still like to come back to Shadows in the future and maybe have a look at some more advanced techniques. But for now, I think we're going to move on because we've already had three tutorials on this topic and there are still loads of other OpenGL topics that we haven't even looked at yet, which I would like to cover. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.